Hey everybody, welcome to Talking Through the Media's your home for entertainment news and reviews by fans for fans. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Send us those questions and comments because we want to hear them. I am Amy Newman and joining me today is the effervescent Chris Fagan. Oh, prepare yourself, guys. Chris, we're talking through the medias here. And I, Evervescence, I, I never, I, I used to love that band. I mean, what was that? <laughs> no, that's, what was that? Ever, Evanescence? I used, to, Evanescence. I, I used to love those guys. Hey, guys, I want you to remember, you can catch Talking Through the Medias here every Wednesday right here at 11 o'clock. Remember, we also do reaction videos on Thursdays and Fridays, sometimes on Saturdays. I mean, depending on the schedule and whatnot. But also, you can rem remember that we do uh, movie reviews. We do, sometimes we do, like, top 10 list, things like that. We do it all over here. It's all one-stop shop. And on Saturdays, we will do a We Got Your Mail. Now, the reason why I'm bringing all this stuff up now is because you are going to see a different We Got Your Mail this time uh, because I won't have time to do it the, the normal way. I got a very tight schedule. I might not even do a We Got Your Mail this Saturday. If that happens, if that's the situation, I will give you guys uh, an update. Uh, so sorry about any kind of a hiccup to the schedule. So just want to get that out the way. Also, remember, once this episode is over and done with, catch the podcast version of it on SoundCloud and iTunes. It's, it usually takes about a couple hours right after we upload this on, uh, on YouTube. And it'll be right there for all you podcasters out there. You can check us out on iTunes. And if you do check us out on iTunes, send a comment. Give us a, like whatever the, the, the review mechanism is. Is it stars or likes or thumbs up or whatever they're doing out there? On, I don't own an iPad or an I, anything. I'm not an Apple guy, so I don't know what the heck you crazy people are doing. Just whatever. Five you, apples. Way yeah, up. yeah, give me, give us five apples. Whatever. A, a, a bushel. Whatever they're called, right? But anyway, <laughs> with that out of the way, guys. <laughs> <You're swimming. laughs> Jargon. Welcome to episode 138, and uh, let's get right into it. So, Amy, let me save me right now for my my ranting. What's the first thing that's trending? Talking out? about bushels. <laughs> T3 Media is your home for uh, entertainment and farming news. All right, our first topic of the week. Why is that trending? Well, on digitaltrends.com, they've announced that the voice actor behind the character of Abby in The Last of Us Part Two, that's Laura Bailey, revealed on her Twitter account that she has been getting death threats showcasing the toxicity surrounding Naughty Dog's divisive game. Unfortunately, it appears that some people are not taking the story well. They've vented their frustrations against Bailey personally. People who have had their share of toxic fandom online have come to her defense, including James Gunn, Ashley Johnson, and Neil Druckmann. So this sounds like the fans are angry, and they're taking it directly out on one of the voice actors. Chris, what do you think? Have the fans gone too far? Oh, uh, no. This, this, this makes total sense. Hey, guys, mm -hmm. I got an idea. <laughs> Let's pick on a voice actor who didn't direct it, didn't mm -hmm. write it, not even, yeah. but even the game developers, like the, the animators, even that I kind of get. But the voice actor, why? Why is this thing? Why is this a thing? And most, most importantly, why is it trending? Because this should not be. This is the most ridiculous thing that I, I've ever. Blaming the, an actor for any project. Because I didn't like I didn't like this movie. I didn't like this video game. I didn't like it. I, I didn't like the way uh, this actor. Uh, I hated this villain. To me, sounds like the success story. This this actor did their job. They made you. She, she's the villain in this video game. If, if you hated her, that means she did her job correctly. What is wrong with you guys out there? And to send her legit death threats is just. It's it's it's. I don't know. It's twenty twenty. That's all. I There's so many things to be angry about, and this is this is the person you're gonna take issue with like it's insanity testify come on get what what tell me what uh, what are you really out there thinking about when you when i sent this to you what what went through your mind legitly i mean i wish i could say i was surprised you know i i feel like my gut reaction was just like yeah that sounds about right because people do this shit all the time they misplace this anger they get so worked up they take everything so personally you know i know people have been really angry about this game because god forbid they've included characters that aren't you know just like straight 
men like i'm sorry that's very upsetting to you but yeah it doesn't surprise me people love lashing out at actors because they're the face of the project i guess it makes them an easy target yeah. uh but you know even I, i've been watching movies recently and i've been thinking more and more as an actor of like even if i don't like an actor's performance you know you're talking about blame blame the director and the designers and whatever even if you don't like the actor's performance, a lot of times that's not their fault. Right. You know, you're still looking at, you know, I've given less than stellar performances, things that I wouldn't, you know, choices I wouldn't have made as an actor going, well, it's what the director wanted. Right. Right. I'm, uh, you know, ultimately I'm here to serve their vision. And even if I don't like it, I got to go in and do it. And like, you know, a a and editing can, can do a lot, but right. for the purposes of this, my God, people, take a deep breath. Stop harassing people just trying to make a paycheck. If you are that worked up about a video game that you feel the need to send a death threat to anybody, my God, just tap into some empathy. Because I think also, like, on, on the Internet, because you're more anonymous, because the language of the Internet can be so heightened, people do throw around things like, I'm going to kill you, you bitch. And it's so easy to not think about, like, how upset would you be if someone said that to you or said that to someone close to you? I think there's just a, a humanity disconnect that we've seen time and time and time again this year um, and before this year. But, you know, just really that lack of empathy. It's disappointing, but like I said, not surprising. But everybody, take a deep breath. If you're going to tweet at someone and say you're going to kill them, take a deep breath, go outside, wear a mask, but get some fresh air. Bake a fucking cake. <laughs> Even if you're not uh, I recommend a coloring book. Like, whatever you gotta do to not send that tweet, <laughs> do that instead. <laughs> right, right. Happy birthday on on it. Even though it's a week past your birthday, just just sit in your chair and just happy. Birthday. I mean, it's it's the weirdest thing, and it's and it feels like it's a twenty twenty three. Obviously, this is something that's that's been happening, like that that you know, like you just said, that anonymous feeling. Like, oh, I'm gonna get. But did you did you see the the tweets on that on, on that? Oh yeah. These people from their own Twitter accounts, and I'm sure some of them were like bogus, like names and things like that. But I'm sure some of them, like legit, like like my name is John Smith, and I'm, you know, just just put that out there, guys. Yeah. These are tech, these are terroristic threats yeah. you made to a human being. Like if she wants to, she can really f you guys up. No, and you think people would learn because I feel like this is the year of people really learning how to go. Oh yeah. Oh, this crazy person yelled a racial slur at me. Well, great. Oh. Internet, do what you do. Cancel. People are yeah. getting don't, doxxed don't, and fired. And don't you know that cancel culture is out there, guys? <laughs> you guys? You guys are just asking for it. Oh, it's but you're right. Like this seems like this year is like the worst for this. Like the, the the lady at uh at Target, did you hear about that in Arizona? Mm -hmm. Um, the the I I I, I kind of understand the freak out, but the but the fact that these are the the type of people who would also you understand the freak out. I, I, I kind of understand the freak out because she's crazy. I understand oh, that she's crazy, sure, sure. but the fact that this is but it seems like these are the type of people that would also in other scenarios would be be champing and bitching about how we uh you know you don't respect the hard-working guy but you're not respecting all those uh employees over at target when you're yeah. throwing I, she was the second person i saw this week throwing things around at a store like one person was told to wear a mask and and she th was throwing the meat and stuff from the store out of the out of the she took the time to take everything out of the basket and say yeah you you pick it up then I'm like, but I, I think you know there's also God help me for saying this out loud, but, you know, I know some amazing people who are really in the video game community, and I think for, you know, years and years and years now, the video game industry and the video game fan bases have had issues with women, you know, like all the Gamergate yeah. bullshit, like, oh, yeah. like I said, it's, it's a lot of why I look at this and go, eh, there's a, a small, a very small, but very vocal faction of video game fans that love to tell women they're going to murder them. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. oh, I don't know where that comes from. And I'm not saying, like, oh, video games make you violent, but that definitely exists as this awful, tiny, but very loud subculture of the community. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, I mean, what did they, what was that? My favorite, one of my favorite lines on uh, uh, the movie Clerks? The, 
a bunch of like what I said, a bunch of savages in this town, right? But the, uh, it's just I grew up I, I grew up in a uh, in a mostly black hood. I, I mean, we we said the n word all the time with the with the a at the end, not the e, not the hard er. So that's something I'm used to. But I mu I must have heard the word with the hard er on video games more than yeah. anywhere else in my life. The second they think you're a black guy, it's like, I'm gonna I know what right. I'm gonna say. It's, yeah. it's the craziest thing, and it's it it it's hard to. It, it's never going to go away, unfortunately. I mean, people are, if they know they can get to you in a certain way, they're, people are just, they're going to try to try to do it. But but these... 2020, the year we found out the internet might have been a mistake. Yeah, you know, what th uh, yeah. What, what's, what, thanks, Al Gore. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you started. Look what you did. I mean, I mean, but you're right. But Amy is right. You guys go out, like you make, make a cake, go jogging with the cake. Make sure the yeah. candles don't blow out. Focus it on that. Out. Yeah, I mean, see, look at a bird. Burn the cake calories as you eat them. Burn the cake. Not. Yeah, burn your burn smooth the joint. Eat the cake. Chill the fuck out. Yeah, burn some cake. Oh, that, that's yes. that's the message. Burn some cake calories, guys. <laughs> Just like like happy happy up. It's 2020. It's almost 2021. We're almost there, guys. We're halfway there. So, I feel like I'm like the new L Woods. Like, exercise gives you endorphins and endorphins make you happy and happy people don't threaten to kill random voice actors on the internet. They just don't. The more you know. <laughs> that's that's some good advice. Guys, let us know what you guys think about these these types of uh, uh, situations. You, I, I don't want to hear anybody saying how like she deserves and she does not. There's, if any, I'm telling, I'm telling you guys right now, any defenders of that of those uh, actions will be blocked and banned from this uh, this channel because that's it's ridiculous. I want to hear from uh, people who might have experienced this firsthand uh, the, on the receiving and stuff like this. Um, are you a person that does this and you're kind of like going, ah, you know what, that was immature. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, you know, when I was coming up, I mean, I, I've been your cake and you mellow it yeah, out. You, Let you, us eat, know. Get your, you eat your calories. Let me know how that birthday cake goes. You yeah, know, send me send me a recipe if you found the good one. I'm always in the market. Exactly. Put it, put it in the box below, guys. Let us know your thoughts on that, and uh, we'll we'll keep talking. All right. Let's move on to the next trending topic. What else is trending out there? Oh, I want cake so bad now. In our next topic, uh, <laughs> Shirley Theron said it is heartbreaking being recast in the Mad Max prequel, as it was reported on BuzzFeed. Uh, Fury Oso was famously portrayed by Charlize Theron, but because uh, the director has planned to explore the life of a young Fury Oso, he's decided to recast the role with an actor in her 20s. She went on to say, obviously, I'd love to see that story continue, and if he feels like he has to go about it that way, then I trust him in that manner. What do you think? Can we have this new uh, generation of Mad Max without Charlize Theron? Is, are you excited? What do you think? No. Next, no. next question. Let's move on. To the next <laughs> question. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's a huge misfire. Did you did you see uh, Mad Max? Yeah. Oh my God, that movie's amazing. I love that. Movie. Yeah, of course you saw. It. We talked about it on the channel about um. Um, uh, the uh, the that was that was top of my Bechtel test. That was on your Bechtel test. I was just yeah, yes, talking was, about movies with God. more than one name, female character that pass it. And uh, honestly, it ties into this because I feel like part of what I really got into, and part of why I felt so good and so empowered as a woman coming. I mean, a, it was just badass, and I like got in my car and I was like, I shouldn't be driving. I was going like sixty down like a residential street, like ah. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> the movie got me way too high. Like the, this, like little apocalypse hit, and I was like, "This is not that cool." I'm just in sweatpants. <laughs> but my point is <laughs> that um, part of what was so cool about that movie, besides like the action and everything, mm -hmm. you don't get to see a lot of women over twenty eight. 30 being badasses being important characters not just being like the grandma and the fact that that movie had like the gorgeous model chicks had you know furiosa who's just badass and, and doing her thing and had the older women it was so cool just to see women across the board and 
the fact that they're really um, feels like really uh, taking that back and going, no, we need a 20 something. I, I get the idea of doing a prequel, but it's also like, let's just, we, this works. We like it. She's great in the role. I don't need a 20 something to helm every single movie. I'm kind of bored of it. Right. I, I agree. I, I kind of see, you know what? And, and, now I can tie into our the last trending topic. I think Charlize Theron is one of those uh, actors who can uh, rise above any any toxicity. I don't guys even, even the guys who love being toxic to women for no reason will stop at Charlize Theron and be like, "No, nope, let her pass, guys. No, nope, that's Charlize yeah. Theron. She's good. She's uh, she's on the approved list." Uh, but I when I heard about this, I was like, "I get it." Like you said, it's fine to see you know where she came from and how she come up. I kind of. I'm curious about that based on um, how the character appears. I think she has like a metal arm and whatnot. I'm, I'm curious how the hell did that happen, right? But I assumed that it was going to be a Charlize Theron like adventure, and then maybe there was some flashbacks or yeah. something where 50% of the movie was like her coming up to um, to her current uh, stage. But but for because what if this movie? I mean, and if it's, if the movie is successful, it's great. I wouldn't want a, a bad movie. But if yeah. the movie is successful, then people are going to demand uh, more. So whoever this new actress uh, is, is going to probably get a new uh, franchise. But you already got a, a, a blockbuster. Draw. So my question is, will it lead in back into Charlize Theron after the second or the third uh, a movie? Or would it be one of those sad, sadder situations where maybe the movie, I'm not going to say, I don't, I don't, hopefully it wouldn't flop. But even if it did flop, then that's going to be like, OK, did it flop to a point where the studio is like, I'll st I'll still take a chance on you doing another one. But you better bring in Charlie Theron or would it flop and go, no, we're not giving you any more money. We don't even know when the damn studios are going to op open back up again. We can't uh, waste this type of, uh, of money. Right, so in this in these uncertain times. I'm thinking it would have been better to bank on a Charlie Theron more. I mean, but I mean, it, congratulations to the new the person, yeah. but I don't know. It feels like a move you save for like the fourth movie in the franchise <laughs> yeah. when Charlie is like, first. I'm done, I'm out, I don't want to do that. But the fact that she's sitting here going, no, I would love I would to loved. do this. And again, it just uh, as a woman, it's shitty to feel like, oh, Great, like it should. It, if it was the only time it happened, I'd be like, whatever. They're just doing a prequel. Right. But as a woman, Hollywood kind of constantly pushes this idea of like, well, once you're 35, no one's interested in your story or what you have to say. So it's just like we very clearly told you we like this. Like right. this movie was wildly successful. Why mess with a good thing now? Why not get, you know, if she's game to do it, why not get another movie or two out of a, a really proven entity? Like I said, wait for, like, the fifth, like, direct-to-Netflix. Like, all right, she's not going to do this one. We'll pull we'll pull some unknown actor out and give her. Speaking of which, I mean, she does have a direct-to-Netflix movie that's about to come out. I think I did a reaction mm, to the yeah. trailer. So imagine... Imagine if that movie is well, very well received on, on Netflix and then like George is thinking, man, did I make a mistake? Should I, <laughs> should I throw Charlize back in this? And what, like I said, it's, it's probably a great opportunity for another uh, uh, actress uh, to come up. And there's a, a lot of people out there that's like, like we need to start giving more up and comers a chance. So, I mean, that's it's <laughs> happening. So an up and comer uh, uh, actors is, is got a chance at a, at a potential franchise. That's great. But, but also stop acting like women pass their expiration date yeah, when they turn exactly. thirty five. I mean, exactly. Charlize was is she got a lot left in the tank. She's this she looks better than me, and I'm twenty eight. So like, I don't know what the fuck. She looks she looks uh, better than me when than when the day I was born. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, love, I mean, she's, you know, she's on my list. I love Charlize Theron. I just yeah. felt like she was. No offense to Tom Hardy, but even after all that drama that was going on on set with that movie and all that that I heard about. Um, Charlize was not one of the things that people were upset about. She was, if I'm not mistaken, she was considered the best part of the movie, one of the best things. She's phenomenal, yeah. Movie. So it's just, which is why it's getting its own spinoff. Nobody's thinking about Mad Max right now for some reason. They're now more focused on her. So that should have told us something that 
I don't know. I just feel like with this, with these uncertain times, with the movie industry on this rocky position, we don't even know if AMC, the biggest uh, French uh, chain, the movie chain in the world, is going to survive this. Which means Hollywood is going to now start rethinking. Like, oh, did I say you have a three hundred million dollar budget? Now you have a fifty million dollar budget. So that's going to be the situation uh, moving forward if these um, movie theaters don't open back up again. Yeah. So. Yeah. I would have banked maybe maybe that's the reason why he's going in a new direction or maybe that's the reason why he should have stuck with Charlie Theron because you want to get as much back as uh as you you know you put in but hey who knows it might be the best script we ever saw it might be the best movie let us know what you guys you are you you heard our thoughts on it you know what we think uh let us know what you guys think put it in the box below uh and, and let's just keep talking about this so maybe we'll talk about it on on we got your mail later on I have a feeling that some some of you guys got something to say about this uh so let's move on to the next topic out there um wait a second where is it here it is okay <laughs> what's next out there? all right so in the film joker uh reddit user has revealed a potential easter egg uh pointing out that the mirror on arthur's table is batman's cowl and his face is silhouette people are saying it looks legit and intentional Claiming it can't be a mere coincidence, so check it out for yourself. See what you think. I did see the director saying it was not an Easter egg. Some people are claiming it has to be, so the uh, the jury's still out on this one, I guess. This no, I I, <laughs> I one hundred percent believe that yes, that it was intentional. I mean, it, it you you don't do something like that. And it and it be a coincidence. Easter eggs are thrown in, uh, thrown in all the time. The 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 way it's perfectly shaped, like Batman's. It's uh, not mask. perfectly shaped. No, no it can't. Well, not perfectly. Because it's got. The, but I could draw. They I use could a piece draw, of paper. To, I could find something in this screen right now and draw the Batman logo on it and be like. <gasps> no, I'm I'm no, I'm one hundred percent. Sure that it was in, it was an intentional throw uh, throwback to Batman's cowl because the 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 angle of it the two lights that were right there for per perfectly lined I know. up the lights above somebody in a room yeah. who the, does what, that what was and the point two? of the paper what an the room? <laughs> so you, are, you so you believe that I that was just a, so. a coincidence you, or, or, I think it's a coincidence oh wow. And if the director said it was a cool, why would he lie about that? Why would he be like, no, what? Did we, I don't... did we read the same article? He said that he did it on purpose. Wait. I did not see that. So, well, either way it goes, you're on the, you're on the record believing that. See, no, the sad thing about it is now, now that the, uh, the possibility of fake news of it being out there now, now we'll ne no, you'll never believe it. If the director himself came out to, to you right now and said, oh, yeah, I did that on purpose, you're going to be like, no, you didn't. I'd be like, please leave my house. I don't know where you've been, and you don't have a mask on. Right. That's true. Uh, <laughs> like, why are you at my house <laughs> defending me? yourself, sir? <laughs> How the hell did you get this address? Like, you're I, don't, I don't know. I think, I, I mean, this gets into a hole. I'm, I'm, I'm about to get myself, like, doxxed and death threatened. I think people want to read in you think they're seeing deepness, what they want deepness and complexity in that movie that I just don't think was there. The, the piece of paper on top of the, the, the mirror, perfectly centered for some weird reason. The, people put things in the center of me. <laughs> the, the the fact that it, when him being shirtless, the, you know, with his skin looks was perfectly. Right. He didn't have a shirt for like a half of that movie. The fact the fact that comic it's book the movies, perfect it's the perfect metaphor comic for book, that movie. Comic book like, movies is a brilliant, and it's not. But comic comic book movies are known for throwing Easter eggs in all the time. I mean, if it's just <laughs> Easter egg purposes. I disagree. <laughs> a lot of DC fans are like, like, like uh, minds explode. You will not take this from me. <laughs> I mean, if, if it is cool, that is a fun story. If it's not, it's still a fun coincidence. I have a feeling that, yeah, like, I see Joaquin Phoenix sitting next to you uh, on the couch. He's like, you can't, you, you, you want this. Take away our Easter eggs, and if you see me bleeding in the street, just walk right past me. You don't even care. Amy's being mean to me. <laughs> uh, I, I believe it was done on purpose. I, I was just—it's why do, stop 
taking my dreams away. <laughs> so she like she's like, if you like it, I love it, Chris. Whatever. You can you can have the Joker all you want. All right, I got mom the top. I don't. It's one of those things where you apologize for someone else. It's like I'm sorry you feel that way. That's not an apology. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I'm not listen gonna... I'm gonna say it I think we all have a little too much time on our hands right now <laughs> this guy on reddit frame by frame like wait just drawing I think he had like a little like cut out of the Batman cowl and he was just like <laughs> he's like looking for a Batman he's just, hold the phone wait his mom is like asking him if he wants some uh uh his sandwich like wait mom hold on I'm busy wait 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 <gasps> listen out. it's quarantine baby some of us are baking bread some of us are making up Easter eggs in mediocre movies. Could you Some imagine? of us are sending death. Or, I don't like that movie. Could you imagine that um, that director is is sitting there like like it's been like a year and a half. Like when is somebody gonna figure that out? Like, I, like <laughs> he has like his Google like alerts. Like every day, uh, has anybody solved the mystery? Eggs, like nothing. Like these fans are like. I mean, I put in all this extra work. Like mad as hell. Like when these, and then when somebody finally, then he probably leaked it himself. He was like, "All right, I'm just gonna have to get this story out there." But, Reddit user Pod Phillips says, "I mean, I I believe it. I mean, I believe it. I mean, you no one's gonna take this away from me. So All right. I'm gonna let you have it." Like, whatever hey whatever whatever helps you guys let us know what you guys think do do you believe that it's just a big old coincidence or are you correct in believing that it was an actual okay. easter egg done on purpose and 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 it failed to us from the the reddit gods the nerdy reddit god <laughs> The sweaty nerd, like, oh my goodness, you know, and he, and he blessed us with this with this uh, Easter egg that uh, that I'm sure was one hundred percent done for you and for me and for world peace everywhere. Let us know what you guys think, and 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 without any toxicity, I'm probably just open up a can of worms anyway. Let us know why you think Amy is uh, is incorrect, or if you agree with their hell. You guys could be out there. You guys could be out of your mind as well, thinking that, <laughs> that it was a coincidence. Why do you think it, it is or it isn't? Let us know. Put in the box below. Let us know what you guys think. And with that out the way, let's go to the last trending topic before we call it. It's time. It's time. Oh, it's time. Okay. Let's let's Here fade into it, it. You ready for the song? <clears throat> We're ready. Feel the story. Time to feel happy. In this one, no one sends anybody a death threat. Feel good story. Everyone's happy. The world's on fire. But this is nice. I totally so just faded into you when you went. <laughs> that was an awesome cut right there. That was perfect. <laughs> So what's the what's the feel good story of today? <laughs> a rescue dog in Tennessee became a Fourth of July hero after alerting her owner to a house fire next door and saving a family asleep inside. Rue, a three year old Belgian Malinois, maybe I'm saying that right, was working quote frantically and unusually at the front door of owner Jeff LaCate's home in Franklin. When LaCate's opened the door to investigate, Rue bolted outside. LaCate's followed and saw his neighbor's home on fire. LaCate's pounded in their door, waking the family of, pounded on their door, sorry, waking the family of three inside. They escape with their pets unharmed. Yay! All the pets are okay. LaCate's used a garden hose to fight the flames until firefighters arrived. Franklin Fire Marshal Andy King said consumer fireworks, which are illegal in Franklin, spark the fire. More reason not to light illegal fireworks. This is this. I mean, it was a it's a feel good story because you have a, you have a the dog who, the, that that saved the day and uh, saved the neighbors, which is probably going to end with someone being either fined or would they arrest, I don't think they'll arrest them for having those illegal fireworks. The guy already lost his house. Wouldn't it be sad if he got arrested for that too? But he's definitely probably going to get a fine. Yeah. <laughs> Not only did you lose your house, but you're getting a fine too. But you're alive, sir. 
and that uh, you you have that that dog that dog to thank because I think the story said that they were all still asleep and the dog mm-hmm. was the one who sensed it from what across the street or next door. Like dogs are amazing. That is crazy. I feel like that's the takeaway here. Could you imagine? Dogs are the best. It wouldn't have been. I don't know what would have happened if that would have been my dog. I'm like, shut the hell up, dude. I'm trying to sleep. Oh I'm trying to go to sleep, and like, oh my goodness, it's a good thing that that neighbor had the uh, the sense to get up and what's wrong? Like that hero uh, gene kicked in. What's wrong, boys? Timmy stuck in that well. Went outside and uh, and saw what was happening. But uh, what what did you think when I when because we we didn't even know we were gonna have a feel good story. Does this does this qualify? Awesome uh, song, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Did this 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 one make you feel good? This is this is constant. This did make me feel good. You know why? Because dogs are the best. Do you? Are I you love dogs. Dog? I'm a dog person. You of course, own, I am. I love dogs. You own it. You own a dog. Uh, I <laughs> I like by proxy own a dog. My parents have a dog. Hmm. That's the only thing, though. I feel like like you're talking about like because literally uh, like a couple hours ago, I was like sitting there on my phone, and our dog Link like came over hmm. and was like trying to get like all up in my like all up in my business, <laughs> like just like. And he's normally super mellow, but he was like, he like got up, like in my lap and was like staring at me. He just wanted to go for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I'm always like, what is it? What's wrong? Is the big one coming? Oh, is like, I was just like, I always read those stories where it's like, and the dog knew she was sick. And I'm like, oh my God, I have cancer. There's going to be an earthquake. Linky's is on top of it. And I'm just like, oh no, you just wanted to go outside. Is, oh, like, what's wrong, boy? Is 2020 going to repeat itself? <gasps> <laughs> the clock rolls on. Three, two, one, 2020 again. The dog is like, try to tell you. Try to tell you. And you know what? That dog still saved your ass, even though you lit off fireworks, which probably scared the shit out of her. Oh, I didn't think about that. All those dogs. Mm-hmm. That- if I was the dog, oh, I'd be a terrible dog. I'd be so petty. I'd be like, that's what you do. <laughs> with my little ears don't dog, scare me. dog just sitting at the window watching the blaze just humming God bless her. glass of wine yeah, just, the dog just, wine? <laughs> stand beside her and guide her <laughs> from the thing to the thing to the thing <laughs> What? Well, that's a, wow, I, I hope that that's I hope that's never a movie about that, like an anti lassie or something. <laughs> oh, did, did, did we just did we just like uh, a petty ass dog? And it has it causes the town. Like, oh, you stuck in the well? <laughs> Where are my dogs? Right? Yes, he throws a dog bone in there and just walks away yeah. or something like that. You like that? That would be funny. A dog that just goes around just pissing people off. Not really causing that much harm, but just... It's just like, no one's looking out for me. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> that seems like a... You make me kill? Get your own kid out of the world. What was that? What was that? It seems like the dog from Oliver Goes uh, West on the Disney, that Disney cartoon. The dog that... that, uh, that, that <laughs> It's been a long time since that's an old school Disney cartoon. There's Oliver and Company, and there's Five Will Goes West, and I'm Oliver not sure. Oliver Company, what... yeah, that was the one. Oh <laughs> man, no, that wasn't Oliver Goes West. I love Company. that movie. I think, yeah, I think I'm think I think I mixed up two movies. Yeah, you're right. It's Oliver Twist, but with dogs. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think that dog was like a jerk dog reason. in the beginning. I think, uh, I think he was like a jerk dog in the beginning, and then he's, he's yeah. Kind of born well, because he's like he's the he's a street. What's dog. his name? It's like the artful dodger of the yeah. dogs. Yeah, he's like, but he sings a really dope Billy Joel song about it. Oh yeah, that's right. it's Billy Joel. Yeah. yeah, that movie's great. I forgot about that. <laughs> I got pretty high and watched that on Disney Plus recently. <laughs> oh, you got to do your um. You should do a top ten best uh, old school like eighties uh, Disney songs and like rank them the nineties ones at the two thousands. Like we should rank those songs. Those are some good songs, man. Yes. But that's our feel good story, guys. That one, if it's not trending, it should be, man. I mean, you got a dog rescue uh, the neighbors. I mean, come on, that's better than what like my, my pet would have done. But I mean. <laughs> Like I said, hey, I, like like Amy said, I mean, the dog was probably terrorized all day and still went out and, and became a hero. So that's awesome. So feel good story. Uh, let us know what you guys think about it. Let us know what you think uh, about the the intro song to it. Amy, you want to just you want to uh, like let us go on on that feel good song? Feel good story. Dogs are awesome. Don't like fireworks. They don't like that. Feel good story. 
one good thing here. Sure, at least they're on Gap Play Furiosa, but dogs are still here. All right. Like I said, we'll work on it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, fix it in post. we'll fix it in post. And that's why editing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, uh, like I said, let us know what you guys think and put it in a box, and we'll talk about that feel good story on We Got Your Mail. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> no, that wasn't a cue. Come on. Bird, bird, same as the bird. Oh, God. All right, that's what that's it for us, guys. Like I said, we're not going to do a, a We Got Your Mail this time. I might do a lot. You need to it. I got to save it. Um, there's a, there's a lot of them that came in, but I, guess, I just got so much work that I got to catch up on. And if I have time, I'll probably go live. And try to because i'm still trying to tinker with this live stuff and try to catch up with some of these uh, uh questions that's been coming in but send them all in guys you know if you want to send us a topic you want us to talk about something that's trending out there uh, you can uh, email us mail at t3medias.com if you want to uh, send us something that we're going to talk about on that we can't talk about on we got your mail just add us at t3medias on social medias at facebook twitter instagram TikTok, all of the uh, social uh instas on the on the internets out there and uh, send us a TikTok dance about your questions is there a you said is there a TikTok dance about no i want i want people to ask us questions via TikTok video oh yeah yeah do that make yeah make that a thing we got i guess we'll have to put that on on the um we have to put that on the uh the channel to request that i guess how how do we get that happen I'm, I guess I guess it's, it's got a trend. TikTok works, Chris. I don't know. I stopped paying attention after Vine. Well, you brought it up. I mean, <laughs> I just know they do the That's how it is. <laughs> you, wait, you know they do the what? The... That's a TikTok dance. I'm pretty sure. Don't look it up. Yeah, don't don't look it up. <laughs> <laughs> that's the episode guys i appreciate you guys watching remember hit the like subscribe button become a subscriber let us know what you guys think and we'll talk about it on we got your mail once again this is chris and amy with talking through the medias and remember guys this episode of talking through the medias was filmed in front of a living dead studio audience scary yes you have to just throw physics and everything out of the window and uh, yeah you definitely you definitely have to turn the brain off it's it's like uh, what, what this guy said earlier. He said it's pretty much like a Michael Bay movie, <laughs> but, but but a little bit better than Michael Bay. Movie. Uh oh. Shots fired. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna reach over to his.